Merge sort is one of the fundamental algorithms used in programming that I believe every good programmer should know. It's a way to sort arrays or data containers by recursively cutting them into two halves. Now I'll be showing you a very specific line by line implementation in Java. At the end of this video is what I would say if I wanted you guys to learn absolutely nothing from this video, just like the countless other merge sort videos on YouTube right now. Instead, this video will focus on the concept behind the merge sort algorithm. That way, not only will you be able to implement it in any programming language, but you'll also be able to know when to use it. And hopefully this way, you won't forget about it five minutes later. But stick around till the end of the video because I will be showing you a visualization of this sorting algorithm instead. Merge sort was invented by a pioneer in quantum physics research, John Newman. However, its brute force implementation on paper makes it look like it was invented by a college freshman rushing to finish his last FRQ in pseudocode on his very first data structures one exam. Nonetheless, there's no denying that merge sort is an effective algorithm, especially when it comes down to handling very large data sets and linked lists. The algorithm behind merge sort is actually pretty simple. It takes a divide and conquer approach. You take your array, divide it in half, divide those halves into halves until you can't divide anymore. Then you compare the subarrays to each other and merge them back. For instance, let's say you have an array with entries 37, 13, 81, and 27. The first step would be splitting the array into two equal halves, 13 and 37, 27 and 81. Step two would be splitting the subarrays into two equal halves, so we are left with four arrays, 37, 13, 81, and 27. You would continue step two until you no longer have any arrays left. Step three is to merge the unilength arrays into sorted subarrays, which gives us 13, 37, 27, 81. Step four is to merge the sorted subarrays into the final array, giving us 13, 27, 37 and 81. You would continue step four until you reached your final array size. And that's really all that it takes to do merge sort. Now, what's equally as important as knowing how to do it is knowing when to do it. So whenever you're tasked with sorting very large data sets or even linked lists, you'll want to use this algorithm. The reason why is because its time complexity is O of N log N in all three cases, worse, average and best. Now, if you don't understand big O notation, that's okay. Don't panic. You don't actually need to understand this to sort an array. Big O notation is like a measuring tape for code. It tells you roughly how much longer a program will take to run as the amount of data it needs to work with gets bigger. Think of it as a way to know if your code will get really slow when you have a lot of information to process. Since merge sort is O of N log N for all three cases, it also implies that there are better algorithms for smaller data sets. We'll be going over those in another video. Here's a visualization of what merge sort looks like when applied to a random data set. Now, if you're still a little bit confused on merge sort, that's perfectly fine. Let this algorithm sink in, apply it to one of your projects if you can. Thank you for watching and until next time.